Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Donovan, I'm a PhD student at Cork Institute of Technology and today I'll be talking about a research study I conducted with my PhD supervisors on quantifying the links between personality subtraits and the basic emotions. Now our research question for the study, this research study was are people with higher in certain personalities more likely as a result to experience certain emotional states? In the psychology research you tend to find that the phenomena of emotions and personality are treated as somewhat distinct when actually there exists a great deal of overlap between the two and we wanted to address this overlap and to assess to what extent the two variables actually correlate with one another. In terms of other motivations we were primarily interested in creating a bi-directional emotional state to personality trait mapping we believe that such a mapping could be of great use to psychology researchers and effective computing researchers to give an example of how this could be used. If you had a data set with the personality trait characteristics of a participant group and you wanted to infer their likely future emotional reactions based on, let's say, you were, you were presenting them an advertisement, you could use this bidirectional mapping to infer their likely emotional reactions based on their prior personality trait answers. In terms of how we answer this question, we believe that it was necessary to conduct a quantitative research study. In terms of personality, person we focus on personality traits, which are typical expressions of effect, behavior, cognition, and motivation across time. In psychology, the predominant model of personality psychology is the five-factor model which argues that there exist five broad categories of personality traits which are openness to experience, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness and neuroticism. And the five-factor model argues that all other relevant sub-traits are subsumed within these five broad factors. Now one of the reasons why the five-factor model has been so predominant is that it has been shown repeatedly to be an actor predictor of key life outcomes from academic success, occupational success to early likelihood of early mortality to likelihood of developing a physical or mental health disorder and in the last 10 to 15 years there has been the introduction of a potential sub trait level to the personality trait hierarchy which are indicated here through the pink nodes. Now the reason for this postulation of sub of pink of these pink sub trait is that it offers a level of precision and accuracy that is unable to be found uh, at the five factor level due to its broadness. In terms of emotions, we looked at the basic emotions, which are a set of emotions that are distinct and are reliably displayed through neurophysiological, psychological, and behavioral signals, which makes them easy to detect. In terms of which emotions we consider basic, we consider the canonical six basic emotions, which Basic emotions theorists and researchers typically agree on, which are anger, disgust, fear, joy, sadness, and surprise. We've also included in our research study anxiety, and the reason for this is that anxiety has been linked to higher levels of neuroticism, and we wanted to assess whether the fact that there may exist a correlation between neuroticism and anxiety, and this may indicate that anxiety should be included as a basic emotion. In terms of Another research question we had going into our research was is a subject level necessary for emotional state to personality trait analysis and what I particularly mean by that is that are certain relationships between a five factor trait and a basic emotion only detectable at the subject level and without which it would go amiss and be a type a false negative. In terms of our experiment procedure we gathered 38 participants to come into a laboratory environment. Each participant carried out the same experimental procedure, which was first to answer a big five aspect scale. This scale is used for um, categorizing people on the five factor traits and sub traits. We then asked participants to watch 12 emotionally provocative videos. And after each video, each participant answered a post video emotion questionnaire, which asked to what extent they felt any of the seven included emotions whilst watching the previous video. We then conducted inferential statistics using Pearson R. Pearson R is a correlation test and it produces uh, an effect size or 
which ranges from minus one, a perfectly negative linear relationship, zero, no relationship, and plus one, a perfectly positive linear relationship. And this resulted in a correlated mapping between personality traits and the basic emotions. In terms of our hypotheses, we expected that each emotion would correlate significantly and substantially with at least one of the big five or their subtracts. That extroversion would positively correlate with the emotion joy. Extroversion has been previously labeled a positive effect personality trait. Neuroticism would positively correlate with at least one of the following fear, anxiety, or sadness. Neuroticism, in contra, has been linked uh, or has been described as a negative effect personality trait. That agreeableness, which has been linked to paternal behavior, would negatively correlate with anger. That conscientiousness, which has been theorized to be underlined by disgust sensitivity without any hard empirical evidence demonstrating that, would positively correlate with disgust. And that openness to experience would correlate substantially and significantly with every personality trait and or their subtraits. The reason for this is that openness to experience has been linked to richer emotional experience rather than any particular emotion. Now you may have noticed that we have not included subtraits in our hypotheses. The reason for this is that the subtrait level is still relatively new and as a result any of the limited research on the interaction between personality traits and emotions have not included subtraits so therefore we had no direction to guide our hypotheses. So any hypotheses related to subtraits were purely exploratory and non-directional. In terms of our experiment results, we had an output of a correlated mapping between personality traits and the basic emotions. Personality traits are on the left-hand side and basic emotions on the top row. The direction, between, the direction of the correlation between any two variables is indicated by color. Red indicates a negative relationship, white no relationship, and green a positive relationship. The magnitude or strength of that relationship is indicated by the effect size and also the shade of colour. So darker shades indicate a stronger relationship regardless of whether it's green or red. In terms of our hypotheses, hypothesis one showed that of the six canonical basic emotions, they did correlate significantly and substantially with at least one of the personality traits, in some cases several, for example with joy, there were several correlations, so too with sadness, so too with surprise. However, the, the one exception to this was anxiety, which had no statistically significant or close to significant correlation with a personality trait. Extroversion did not positively correlate with the emotion joy, which was in contrary to prior research. Neuroticism positively correlated with at least one of the following emotions. It positively correlated with sadness, both on neuroticism and volatility. It did positively correlate with fear and anxiety, but not approaching statistical significance. It had positive correlations with anger and disgust, which supports the idea that neuroticism is a negatively valence trait because anger and disgust have, in, in a lot of cases, a negative valence to them. They're rather unpleasant emotions to feel. Agreeableness negatively correlates with anger, but this correlation was not statistically significant or approached it. Conscientiousness was actually in fact negatively correlated with discuss prior to previous theoretical postulations. And this is particularly the case for industriousness. Openness to experience had substantial effect size correlations with six of the seven basic emotions, substantial in this case means greater than 0.10 or less than minus 0.10. The one exception to this was fair. However, it's hard to draw a conclusion from this result as other personality traits had similar patterns of relationship. You can also see that neuroticism correlated significantly and substantially with six of the seven emotions included. In terms of overall conclusions, we found that results did indicate that people higher in certain personality traits are as a result more likely to experience certain emotions. The subtrait level was necessary to identify multiple relationships and in cases where there was a uh, overlap in that the five factor trait and their subtrait both predicted a person uh, a basic emotion often the subtrait predicted it with a higher effect size in terms of future work we would like to increase the sample size and scale the experiment procedure to test the robustness of our results we would also like to test the reproducibility of the relationships found between personality traits and the basic emotions through multiple modalities so facial expression analysis 
semantic analysis and effective causality. We believe that this research nonetheless provides a foundation for state to trade inferences and that this can be harnessed and utilized by effective computer researchers and psychology researchers. That pretty much covers it up for me today. Thank you very much for listening. If you have any questions about what I've talked about today, please feel free to contact me or my PhD supervisor, Dr. Rory O'Reilly. Our uh, contact details are listed below. In terms of references, here is also a list of references I have included, which were uh, linked in the PowerPoint presentation. Thank you very much for listening.